What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another King James video and today I thought I'd make a little video for all of my beginner film photographers out there. I want to make a video today talking about beginner mistakes to avoid for anybody out there who is just getting started with film. Without further ado you guys let's go ahead and jump right in. Here are beginner film photography mistakes to avoid. All right, so the first beginner mistake that I see a ton of people doing when they're first getting into film is getting their film developed at a drugstore. So for example, CVS, Walgreens, I think Walmart even still does film developing. Uh, and that's a huge no-no, especially right now in 2020, because what happens is when these drugstores get their film in or when you send it out with them, one, they charge a ridiculous amount of money and they don't even develop the film in that store. What they'll do is they'll package it up and they'll send it out to a warehouse where this warehouse develops all the film and then they give you these little 4x6 prints back. They don't even give you your negatives back. Uh, and your negatives are truly kind of, you know, the end product of film photography because who knows, maybe later on you want to scan your film uh, and that's how you kind of can digitize your, your images. So if you don't have the actual film negative, you won't be able to scan your film and post it up somewhere on like Instagram or YouTube. The best route to go if you're getting your film developed is to find a professional film developing lab and uh, you know there are tons and tons out there. Personally one of my favorite labs is based out in San Clemente, California and they are uh, the Darkroom Lab and the Darkroom Lab is a very professional lab. They take care of your film, they scan it, they send you your negatives back uh, and you can even order prints as well. So this is not a sponsored video, I just really do love the darkroom lab so uh, check them out down in the description below but otherwise find a professional film developing lab that can scan your film for you develop your film and also send you back your negatives that is your true hard copy of your photographs Mistake number two, man, expecting film photography to be perfect. Uh, and this goes in kind of all aspects. And one way I will try to communicate this with you is if you look at something like digital photography, if you underexpose your images just a little bit, that's fine. You throw it in the Lightroom, you adjust the exposure, it's still gonna look good. When it comes to film photography, if you underexpose your negative, for example, with like black and white, C41, or even slide film, what you'll notice is that you're gonna get a ton of grain. And it's gonna be really, really hard for you to boost those shadows up in post. And even if you try to, what you'll see is that there's still gonna be a lot of grain and it's just gonna be a whole mess. So don't expect film photography to always be perfect. You're gonna get light leaks as well. Just know that happy accidents happen. You're gonna get light leaks. You're gonna get underexposure. You're gonna get a lot of grain, um, but there are ways to prevent these things. Film does have a learning curve to it and uh, you're gonna have to learn some of the ins and outs to achieve good results with film photography. Mistake number three. This is something that I'm pretty sure 95% of all film photographers go through at some point in time, and that is spending too much money on gear. It's very easy to get caught up nowadays in some of the higher ticket items like the Ashika T4s, the Olympus Stylus Epics, uh, Leicas for example, and if you're a beginner in film photography, it's very easy to come to the misconception that the more money you spend on your camera, the better results you're gonna get, which is completely not true. You don't need to spend a ton of money on photography gear. One one camera that I recommend and is still a camera that I use all the time is the Minolta X700 uh, and you can find this camera for under a hundred bucks with a lens and this is going to give you really really good results it has a built-in light meter uh, you can also get something like the Canon AE1 program or even the Canon A1 but there are tons and tons of cheaper alternatives out there to some of the higher ticketed items and getting good results doesn't necessarily stem from spending more money it comes from learning exposure from how accurate your light meter is in your camera or shooting the right film type so things like that there are a lot of variables that go into you know how to get good images and spending a lot of money on a film camera isn't one of them for sure mistake number four not knowing all of the different film types. Now, I'm not talking about like the different film stocks. So like there's Portra, there's Fuji. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the differences between black and white film, C41 color film, and also slide film. Because these three different film types are completely different kind of realms essentially because you got to shoot them in different ways to achieve good results with each so black and white film you want to be able to expose that uh, either very spot on with the exposure or over a little bit or under 
there's a little bit of wiggle room depending on the film stock but in terms of like c41 film you can overexpose c41 and you'll still get really good results up to maybe one to two stops but generally certain film stocks with c41 color film like porsche for example when you underexpose it a ton it does not look good and that goes for pretty much all film types but the big one in my opinion is slide film and the reason why i bring this up is because slide film has a very narrow room for error because slide film you need to nail exposure every single time perfectly otherwise if you overexpose it even just a little bit it will yield not the best results and the same goes for underexposing you underexpose slide film it's not going to look good so slide film is very tricky um, there's a little bit of room for error and you essentially want to nail exposure every single time so understanding the different types of film stocks like black and white c41 and slide film learning about it a little bit more so that you guys are more familiar with how to shoot and treat each type of film stock all right, moving on to mistake number five, trying to photograph everything with your lens wide open. And what I mean by this is you're shooting at apertures like 1.8, 1 1.4, f2, you know, those super, super bright apertures all the time. And I get it, man. You want to get that nice, creamy, shallow depth of field. You want to get bokeh, right? And that's fine. There's a time and place for that. But if you're shooting your lens wide open in the daylight outside with like 400 ISO film, you're gonna get some super overexposed shots if your camera can't handle it. You don't always need to shoot your lens wide open. Stop that baby down if you're in sunlight. For those of you guys who know about Sunny 16, which is something we're gonna talk about later on in this video, you guys know that on sunny days, you're supposed to be shooting at like F16. And it's not always the case, but if you always shoot everything wide open at like F1.8 or F1.4, you are bound to get some overexposure in your images, which can just completely blow your frame out and you're just gonna have this super bright frame. So long story short, man, if you're outdoors and it's sunny outside, don't shoot it wide open, man. Stop that lens down, F16, F8 if you want to. And that brings us over into mistake number six, not learning Sunny 16. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what Sunny 16 is, Sunny 16 is basically the blueprint to exposure. So if you wanna be able to shoot your camera outside without using a light meter and being able to read the light outside so you can adjust your camera settings manually, you need to learn Sunny 16. I made a video about how to shoot Sunny 16 I'm gonna leave that in the description below or maybe even click up here I don't know what YouTube does anymore but check that video out if you don't know what sunny 16 is yet I highly highly recommend this is one of the first things that you learn when you are just getting started in film photography it's gonna save you a ton of time and it's gonna minimize the mistakes that you get so that you can get really good results every time I promise you sunny 16 has to be one of the first things you learn when you're getting into film photography and the last beginner mistake that I have for you guys is not being subscribed to this channel. All right, just shameless plug. No, seriously, because I post a lot of videos that are geared towards film photography. And these are things like, you know, informational videos on how to shoot Sunny 16, for example, or how to zone focus. So if you guys aren't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below, man. If a lot of what I do on this channel is community based, you guys ask me what you guys want to see. And I answer that within these videos. So uh, if you guys are new, man, welcome to the community and uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. So thank you guys so much for checking out the beginner mistakes to avoid for film photography. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or even suggestions for future videos, feel free to comment that down below. Also follow me over on Instagram at KingJapes if you guys wanna check out more of my own personal photography. Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Good luck out there shooting film. And as always, Minolta Gang. Whew.